Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and in this series of tutorials, I'm going to discuss how I capture and process DNG raw images from the new Ricoh Theta Z1. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss the settings I use for capturing the images. Over here to the right, you can see a screen capture from my iPhone that controls the camera. And you can see here under my settings, I can easily set it to an auto mode to capture some great images. But here today, I am recommending that you prioritize your settings for your best results. Here you can see, in this case, I've prioritized the aperture setting from that previous dialog. I've prioritized it to a 5.6, the smallest aperture that is available with this camera. By prioritizing in this setting, I can get my best focus, my range of focus from objects in the distance and objects in the foreground is best with this setting. However, in general, I tend to set it and prioritize my settings to the ISO. I like to have the least amount of noise within my image. So for daytime photography in bright sun, I set my ISO to a value of 80. But wait, there's more. Not only do I prioritize the ISO, but I also take three different exposures. I take a standard exposure as you see here, but I find that the clouds get burnt out, as you can see in the background. Here, if I compensate the exposure to a value of minus one, as you can see over here, I start to see more detail in my clouds. But there's even more because I compensate and capture one additional exposure. As you see here, I have a minus two exposure. So in general, I capture a standard exposure, a minus one and a minus two at every setup for my 360 capture. This gives me a full range of exposure. So I have detail in my clouds and I might also capture some detail in my foreground. Typically, I choose one of the exposures to work with, and you'll see that in my next tutorial. If I switch over here to Adobe Bridge, we can take a look at the final results right here, my first exposure, my second exposure, and my third exposure. In my next tutorial in this series, I'm going to show you how I process this image from its original DNG raw format all the way into Adobe Photoshop, where I add the final details and touch up to this 360 image. There you have it. Give these camera settings a try the next time you capture your images.